Hey guys, welcome back. So, a couple new subscribers have asked me a question on setting up Frill Dragon's cages and their care. So, I figured I would make a video on it. Um, we got a couple different lines of lizards here. They're all Frill Dragons, of course, but we have New Guinea Frill Dragons, we have Hybrid Frill Dragons, we have Australian Frill Dragons. I got four Australians, two Hybrids, and one New Guinea. New Guinea is a male. The female is a hybrid. This female is a hybrid. Uh, I'm not sure about this one. This one could be either or. Uh, his frill, I think it's a he, but it could go either way. Alright guys, so I want to talk about the location of frill dragons before we get into the caging. So, frill dragons come from South New Guinea and Northern Territory Australia. They also come from New Queensland, Australia. The Northern Territory in Australia and also uh, New Guinea, they will show red beards, they will show red tummies. Um, Australians will generally get a little bigger than the New Guineas. New Guineas get about 24 to 26 inches. Australians will get three feet and hybrids will be anywhere in between. They can reach three feet. This girl is a hybrid and she's about 28 inches. All right, so let's talk about the diet for these lizards because it's the same for either the New Guinea or the Australian or the hybrids. They're all carnivorous, they're insectivores. They like to eat bugs. Um, in Australia, they'll eat locusts, they'll eat spiders, they'll eat termites. Um, generally, the ones that we have here in America will be eating, if you want to feed them properly, you should feed them a main diet of dubia roaches. You should also use super worms and horn worms. That is a really good diet for these guys and once a month when they're about this size, you can throw a pinky in there. But I wouldn't do that too often. Again, once a month. That's, that's again, kind of pushing it, but that's not bad for these guys because it's a lot of protein for them. Filled dragons are mainly arboreal. They like to live in trees. 90% uh, of their life will be spent in the trees. They really only go on the ground to hunt and mate. Besides that, You'll find them more in these branches. They love cork. You'll see them just hanging out on cork. I got cork all over the uh, cage. Set it up like little trees. They need to be missed it roughly three times a day if you can do it. Uh, I like to do morning, evening, and right before I go to bed. Even though the lights are out, it just keeps the humidity up. You just don't spray them directly. Um, my husband tree is a little different in this room because this is a whole lizard room. I have the room pretty much sealed off. Uh, the whole entire room sits at about 60 to 70 percent humidity. The ambient temperature of the room is 95 degrees, I believe. Inside the cages, it's 91 degrees, 60 humidity. I got the window open, so makes sense. I'm putting this girl away. She doesn't want to be held. Bye, boat. The humidity in these cages needs to vary. You need to have dry spots, you need to have wet spots. The top of my cage generally stays around 30 to 40 percent humidity. It's drier because there's more basking areas. We got one basking area here, we have a second one over here. We actually have a third one over here. These three areas generally stay nice and hot. Um, average temperature of those spots is about 120 to 130 degrees. Um, in the summertime, I lower it a little bit because the whole room sits at like 95 degrees. I might keep it around 120 during the summer just because of how hot it gets in the whole entire room. The cooler spots of the cage sit around 80 degrees and about 70% humidity. Actually, this says 60% and 80 degrees, but it's subtropical. So my bedding is a mix. It's a nice blend of coconut, coconut soil, coconut bark underneath, and I don't remember the name of this stuff, but it was like the forest bedding but I, I have this all blended together. I have this on the top, 
uh, the bark a little bit underneath the very thin layer and then the soil at the very bottom so if she actually does dig her way through this box she will reach soil and it is a little wetter at the bottom I think what I'm gonna actually do in this cage though is construct like a two foot wall here and just fill this up with the blend of, of uh, substrate and hopefully she'll actually start barrowing and we'll get some eggs sooner than later so these guys here are hybrids let's talk about some of the Australians this is one of the baby Australians here now baby Australians will again get about three foot in size um, they're I'm pretty sure these guys are Northern Territory because they're pretty orange and they're pretty red. If you guys are purchasing these lizards from pretty much any market and they're under $300, they're 100% Indonesian. Um, the Australians tend to cost more, anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500. They will get bigger, but they can look similar to the Indonesians. So real quick, I'm going to show you a difference. This guy does not like being held. Not even after he's out. All right, so what we got here is an Indonesian and an Australian. You can noticeably tell the differences here. Indonesians, New Guineas, whatever you wanna say, they're darker in patterns. The Australian's a lot lighter in pattern. The Australian also has a lot more color to her head. Um, the patterns kind of look similar, but you can tell these are the same animal, but almost like a different morph, or at least from a different area. Now, even though this guy right here is Indonesian, New Guinea, he has a red beard. He could fool you to make you think that he is Australian. And you wouldn't know, and you could pay $1,200 for this guy and get home and not know until a couple years later when he's full size and you're like, hey, this guy seems a little small. Or if you already have Australians, you would probably notice the difference. Like this guy is probably gonna turn really red when he gets older. Maybe even orange, I'm not sure, but but those by those back patterns, I'm assuming he's gonna get really colorful. This guy here is probably gonna stay really dull in color in his back. You can also take a look at their tails. The Australian has a lot duller of a tail. It doesn't look like the patterns, the patterns fade a lot on the Australian. He is, his tail looks like it's about to shed, but I mean, he might just be dirty. I'm not sure. This guy, you can visibly see that pattern going down his back. One last thing I've learned about these guys, um, Australians and New Guineas, they both seem to be a little skittish. Uh, they don't really like to be held too much. When you start holding them like daily, they get a little better with you, but for the most part, these guys really don't like to be held. So you have to really put the time in and really put the work in to let these guys know that they can trust you. I'm gonna put these guys back before they jump all around. All right, so let's talk about feeding with these guys. I've told you what they eat, but let's talk about their feeding schedule. Babies should eat twice a day. So let's say you got a job or you go to school. Before you go to work in the morning, you should throw some roaches or some crickets or some mealworms or superworms in the cage. Now, with calcium, babies should get calcium both meals during the day. They should get calcium with their morning meal. They should get calcium with their evening meal. Also make sure you're missing them three times a day. Babies will eat every single day. Juveniles will eat maybe every single day, maybe every other day. They're, they can be picky. And adults, like Boat over here, 
he eats every third day usually. Boot is a very picky eater right now. She is an adult. Adults generally eat every third day. Um, some of them might eat a little more, but for some reason, her and Rusty in that cage, they eat about every third day. Uh, they eat, these two in particular, are eating superworms and hornworms at the moment. Before we finish this video up, I really want to stress the importance of having cork and branches in these cages. Again, these lizards live 90% of their life in their trees. They look down on the ground for their food and mating. That's really about it. These trees, these cages have a lot of branches and they all get different temperatures. This branch here probably hits about 120 degrees because it's about six inches under a light. This one also hits about 120 degrees because it's under two different lights. And then the temperatures change. Like look, here's this little guy right here. He's chilling under his basking spot. And it's hard to see, but right here, I have a monsoon, which is just a little misting machine. I have these on my bigger cages. I also have something set up. So every night, I change the water out of the cage, right? I'll take the water dish out. I'll dump the water into a little bucket. And then I'll refill this little dripper tomorrow morning. That dripper will give him fresh water inside his water bowl every day and it will slowly just gain into the bowl. You guys gotta make sure you're washing that bowl out every single night as well. You don't wanna get germs in there. And you also wanna make sure you're taking out the poop. If you don't have bioactive cages, which I'm working on doing myself, but they're not there yet, mealworms and isopods do really well at clearing the, the poop up, but if not, you gotta make sure that poop's coming out every single day because if you have other bugs in there such as dubias or crickets and they eat that poop, it could make your lizard sick. End up getting stomach parasites, infections, it's not good. So just make sure you're doing that. It's very, very, very important you remove the poop from the cages. The water needs to be changed every day. Your humidity should be in the dry spots 30 to 40%. The wet spots, 60 to 70%. Temperatures need to vary during the day from 120 degrees to 85 throughout the whole cage. And then at nighttime, you want your cages to sit around 80 degrees. All right guys, we're gonna wrap this video up with a short feeding. Um, I think I've explained just about everything I do with these guys. If you, if you guys think I missed anything, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it from you. So I'd like to know if I am actually missing anything in my husband tree, but I'm pretty sure I hit it every nail on the head here. Um, if you guys haven't done it already, like and subscribe on these videos. Really appreciate it. It mean a lot to me. But other than that, let's finish this video off with the feeding. Literally having no luck feeding these guys. Joel has given up. He just wants to edit at this point, so I... I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. We are going to get one of these guys to eat. Yes. There we go. Yes. I told you we would get a feeding. I told you guys we would get a feeding tonight.